Hey folks, I'm Fonz, and this is Real Kikiro. Every once in a while, it's good to look back on things from your past to see what you can learn from them and how far you've come. I recently took another look at a puzzle I hadn't seen in some years, a puzzle which stumped me greatly when I first started doing these. Extreme 11 is not an easy puzzle, and I believe it's one of the early extreme level ones that will really stump newer solvers, so I think this is a good candidate for a video. It took me almost an hour to solve on my first pass, but going back I had it done in less than 15 minutes. It's nice to see that level of improvement, although I will note that solving times are not a linear curve, and that large gap is largely due to huge stretches of time feeling stuck. Getting over that feeling and forcing yourself to make progress is often a tough thing to manage, but learning different strategies and changing your pers perspective can often help to give some clues as to where to look next. And sometimes you just need to set it down and come back later with fresh eyes and a clear head. It's easy to get caught up tunnel vision in a train of thought and miss details you'd otherwise see. On that note, let's jump into Extreme 11. So before I solve the puzzle, I do, of course, always like to just take a good little note of the shape of it. I like looking at the shapes of these puzzles, in particular for this app and for puzzles uh, like Kikura puzzles that are like this kind of small condensed size. Um, it's always fun to see the shapes that they come up with. This one looks like a bacteria, I think. I'm, I'm gonna call this the bacteria puzzle. Uh, it does have a hole in the middle. So apparently it's hungry. It, it is the hungry bacteria. Um, so this puzzle has kind of a kind of an interesting shape, uh, memeing aside. Uh, First off, it's got two kind of thresholds where you can cut off the puzzle in the middle. Um, other than that, you have uh, these four kind of uh, squares in the middles of, of each row and column, uh, little two by two blocks. Typically not too bad to deal with. Um, a lot of times they'll have like two different possibilities that they can be. Um, and you can always take, uh, let's see, this is an easy one to work with. You can always take something like this uh, 7 and 13, you can add those two together, gives you 20, and you can subtract that off of this 8 across, uh, and that'll give you 12. And you can tell, therefore, that these two squares, whoops, these two squares will always add up to 12. Uh, looking over here at this 28 across, uh, that means that these four squares will always add up to 16. Uh, so these little, uh, these little boxes here, are actually pretty helpful to have. They're, they're kind of nice to see. It'd be actually more difficult without them. Um, on the other hand, you have these um, almost like two two by two boxes kind of meshed together uh, into what pretty much becomes like a three by three shape uh, when, you, when you look at it like as it affects the, uh, the main row and the main column. Uh, those can be a little bit tricky to deal with, but at least you kind of have the fact that um, Oftentimes, uh, the like this top square can influence the bottom square here, or like vice versa with uh, the left and the right squares. Uh, so a lot of times, uh, these four squares will kind of all be um, related in some way, or at least tied together. Um, so yeah, that's uh, a couple of notes about the shape of this puzzle that I find find kind of interesting. Uh, additionally, uh, we have. Uh, both of the main columns are eight blocks. That means they're both going to be missing one number. Uh, 43 down is going to be missing a two, and 42 down is going to be missing a three. So we know that there will be no two in this column and no three in this column. Um, yeah, so a couple, couple nice things about just the shape of the puzzle. All right, and let's get into solving this. So uh, we can start off with uh, with taking notes of some of these uh, kind of these easy things. It's always generally the the best thing to do. Uh, this can be a eight nine eight nine, and uh, the eight nine with the thirteen uh, it can be a four five. Uh, you cannot have a five with the ten over two, so that's going to give us a four fingers, a nine and eight, and a six with the four. <clears throat> and uh, 
if I recall correctly, that's actually going to be the only like solid piece of um, uh, penning in that we're going to be doing for a little while, actually. So from here, we'll just start filling in some of the easy numbers, uh, some of the things that we don't really have to think too, too much about. Um, I guess we can do this. Uh, so the seven across right here, uh, we are missing a two in this column and we also already have the six. Uh, so we can eliminate those from that square. And that is going to be a, my brain is not wanting to do math on that. Okay. That is going to be that. Uh, the eight over two is going to be one, two, three, five, six, seven. So we can start pinning that down. Um, this, uh, 12 is 12 over two is always three, four, five and, uh, seven, eight, nine. Uh, this intersection with the seven, we know that it can't be seven, eight, nine. So we can already kind of shorthand that down to just the three, four, five, which leaves the seven, eight, nine up there and a, uh, two, three, four here to match with the three, four, five. And that's going to leave a five, six, seven up there. Uh, so taking a look at this, uh, this is already kind of one of the patterns that we can start to note um, when doing these. And that is uh, low number goes with high number is probably the easiest way to put it. Uh, so put the low number here with the high number there, five and a nine. Uh, the six, the middle numbers, uh, six and the eight will go together. And the high number from this one, the seven, will go with the low number from this one, which is a seven. So just by looking at this, uh, we can kind of immediately just tell that there will not be a seven and a seven. Uh, so that's always a nice little thing. We can pencil in that square real quick. That's not too, too bad of one. This is the intersection of the six and the 13. We'll leave us with a four five, uh, which goes with the eight nine for the 13 and a one two with the six. Uh, the intersection of the 5 and the 11 will give us a 2, 3, 4, uh, which will be a 1, 2, 3 with the 5, which we can't have the 3 uh, because of that uh, no 3 in this 42 column, uh, which will take out the 2 there, and that will leave a 7 and an 8 up there for the 11. Uh, so now we have our 1, 2 for this column. We also know that there is no 3 in this column. Um, so, I guess just kind of maybe a little pedantically, we can just fill in all of these with uh, with just some notes. Uh, 15 over 2 is kind of an easy one. That's 6, 7, 8, 9. That, and uh, that intersects with the 11 for a 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, here, this 8 and 11 is going to be a 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 uh, for the 8. Uh, and that is going to take away the seven here. Uh, and so for the eight down, that's going to leave a one, two, three, and a five and a six. Over here with the 12 down, uh, 12 over two is three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. So we can already kind of pencil that in. Um, we can actually, I think, take away the three here, if I'm correct. Um, but I'm not gonna spend too much time thinking about that because it's really not important. Uh, and you'll see why here in a minute. Uh, the eight and the 13 is going to be a five, six, seven for that intersection. And that will be a six, seven, eight going with the 13 and a one, two, three for the eight. Uh, intersecting with the seven there will be a four, five, six. Um, I guess we could probably do this one. Uh, so this is going to be a one, two, three and a five, six, seven for the eight. Uh, I shouldn't have filled in that top one yet. Uh, but for the bottom one, we're going to have an eight, seven, six and a uh, four, three, two. Uh, so we can't have the eight and the six in this row and we can't have the two. Uh, so that's going to take out the, uh, the seven, uh, the one and the three. Uh, which is going to be a one, a five, and a seven up there. Uh, let me double check my math, make sure that all that is correct. And it is. Um, I guess alternatively, if you don't like to do math, um, so let me fill this back in. If you don't like to do math, 
Um, so going back to what we were talking about with the low highs, um, noticing patterns is a big thing with these Kikiro puzzles. Uh, and the math helps, but you know, it's always basic math and it's still not 100% necessary because you can just start to notice patterns such as this. So we said we can't have the eight and the six, right? So let's take out the eight and the two, uh, but let's take out the eight. Uh, that's the high number. So take out the low number, take out the high number. Uh, the six is the second highest number. Second lowest number is a three. Second highest number is a five. Two is the lowest number. Seven is the highest number. One is the lowest number. Um, noticing patterns like that can be very helpful, uh, particularly like to, I mean, I guess because ultimately the noticing patterns like that is faster than doing the math um, because it takes out the thinking work, you know, unless you're an internal abacus, um, it, it just makes things a lot faster and easier. Uh, so I would definitely recommend uh, learning stuff like that. Uh, Going back to this 43 down, not being able to have a two, uh, we can take out the two and the nine for the 11 and then the nine and the five for that 14. Uh, and that's gonna leave us here. So we can fill in more stuff. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll fill in this last little bit. Just this last uh, quick thing. So there's no six, nine there, uh, or six, eight, sorry. The six, eight is three, five. And then, uh, whoops, we will fill in the rest of that. Okay, so this is probably the point in the puzzle where most people are gonna like stop and uh, trudge around not making a whole lot of progress. And I'm, I mean, if I had to guess, I would assume that that's probably what happened to me when I did this uh, a few years ago. Uh, this is, like I said, it's a tough puzzle. Um, and there's certain things that you pick up over time that you, you have to know in order to, to be able to deal with something like this. Uh, you can probably go around and start clearing up little bits and pieces here and there, uh, but you're gonna find at some point it's, it's tough to make progress from this point. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what do we do? Uh, the first thing that, that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna divide this puzzle in half. I'd mentioned these two thresholds here uh, and you can use the top blocks, you can use the bottom blocks. Uh, ultimately, you can do this however, however you want. You can split the puzzle and compare different things in so many different ways. What, what I'm gonna be doing here is actually just an extension of what I did in the very beginning uh, taking the 7 and the 13 and comparing them against the 8. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to do something that is uh, where is it? All right, I am going to go into my super special note taking mode and draw on this puzzle because drawing and doodling is fun. Um, OK, so let's take a look at what we did earlier. So we took the 7 down and the 13 down and we compared them against this eight across so the reason why that gave us a 20 or um what a 12 was because uh we're taking the sum of these four squares and taking the sum of these two squares and then we're able to figure out the difference between them and then that just leaves these other two squares. Uh, my circles on it probably just make it less clear. But if you look at the highlights, so the highlights going down are the red one uh, in red uh, are the columns. And then, of course, uh, going horizontally is, is the, uh, the rows. Um, when you do this, you can start to see uh, if I go back into highlighter mode, you can start to see where you're going to be comparing when you do this. So, and like basically the squares that are left out, the squares that don't have both red and blue in them are going to be the squares that you're going to be left looking at. And so you can do halfway around the puzzle like I've done here. 
Um, I'll actually uh, go ahead and, and do that. Just uh, keep everything nice and clear. Um, but yeah, you could go halfway around the puzzle like that if you want. If you want, uh, instead of doing an addition, because so looking at this, you have two blues, two blue squares that you're going to be left with as your your sum at the end, or your difference in this case. Um, those two blue, uh, two squares are added together to get that difference. Uh, if we were to say add in this this other square, uh, so now we've we, we've added in that column, uh, which changes it to now we're we're going to have uh, the red square minus the blue square is going to be our eventual answer. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. You can do it however you like, how whatever you want to do in order to split things up. Like I said at the smallest example, we have this. Um, I've on some puzzles had to do things, uh, you know, even something kind of simple, like taking this one and this one against this one and this one. And in the case of this answer, you're going to wind up with uh, these two these two red squares versus these two blue squares as your answer. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ways to just kind of split up the puzzle in different, different ways like that. Uh, and it'll give you a lot of information about what you're looking at because ultimately everything adds up everything is balanced and you can use that knowledge of it being balanced to your advantage to get information um so that's that's kind of that uh hopefully that theoretical explanation was, was good enough for like what we're going to be doing uh i did reds going down so we'll do reds going down again um so yeah, we're gonna have this, 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 and these against all these, that's this, 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 and this. Um, this is honestly, so something else that I would do. Um, well, and, and we can still do this. Uh, the, the drawing is what the drawing is. Um, that's ultimately like what we're looking at. But in order to make this math a little bit simpler for ourselves, I'm gonna go ahead and cross off a few of the uh, clues that would otherwise cancel each other out. So like these two 11s, one goes across, one goes down. Uh, those are gonna cancel each other out. These are gonna cancel each other out, the two eights. Um, the seven and the seven will cancel each other out. Um, and additionally, we can take this, uh, we can ignore this whole section right here if we take this eight and six, add up to a 14, and we take 14 off of this 43 for 29. Uh, we could do the same with um, with this section over here, but we've actually crossed uh, used that eight already to cross that off. So we will not do that. Uh, from here, uh, can I simplify more? Maybe, but this this is good. Um, so from here, we have a 29, a 7, and a 13, which is 20, so added to the 29 is 49, uh, plus uh, 14, which is going to be uh, math, 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 5363. So we're going to have 63. Uh, and I'm actually setting this up backwards. Uh, 63 is what we're going to minus it from, uh, just to make it a little bit more clear. From this side, we have 28, 9 is going to be 37. Uh, and actually, we could take the 9 and the 11 is 20. So 20 plus 28 is 48, uh, plus an additional 20 is 68. 68 minus 63 is going to give us a difference of five. That looks mostly like a squiggle, but there we go. That's a little bit better. Um, that's going to give us a difference of five. Now, it might have been a little confusing the way that I did that. So I'm going to, oh my God, I'm going to go back just a little bit. And I'm going to do this with just everything. It's a lot more math to do it this way, and you'll kind of see why I do the shortcut that I do. Um, 
but hopefully I don't mess up this mental math uh, too, too bad. So let's take the across. So we're going to have an 8 and 11 is 19, uh, plus 28 is uh, 47, plus 9 is going to be 55, no, 50, 56. Um, 56. Uh, we're going to have 66, 76, uh, 70, uh, 83. Uh, 94, 104, 114, 121. So we're going to have 121 as our full total uh, before we had 66. And let me write that down so I don't forget it. Uh, for our downs, we will have a 7 and 13 is 20. 7 and 13 again is 20 for 40. Uh, we will have a 14 and 8, which is 22, so that'll be a 62. Uh, plus 11 is going to be 73. Uh, 83, 93, 103, 113, 116. So 116 will be our total for the columns, and these two minus each other will give us 5. So you can do the shortcut, you can not do the shortcut. Just depends on how much math you like to do. Um, I prefer less math, so I do the shortcut. But either way, it's gonna give us five. So looking at our drawings, our doodles, that square and this square add up to five. That might not seem like a lot right now, but what all in here can add up to five between the two of these? Luckily, five is an odd number, so we won't get hung up if it was like a six, forgetting that three and three can actually work in this sense. Um, but only one and two and three and four. That is what we got. Now, on its own, that's actually not going to solve the puzzle. So it might be a little bit underwhelming to just eliminate those or, or narrow those down to uh, two choices a piece. Um, however, we do know now that they're related uh, in the sense that if this is a one, this is a four. If this is a three, this is a two. And I, I mean, I, I guess that's that's the most uh, face value thing that, thing that we really have. However, we can now start to uh, use that to our advantage, piecing together other parts of the puzzle. Um, because three, four is really not very many things that that could be. Oh, also, I didn't eliminate uh, this six and six. Uh, so again, high with low, low with high, um, right here. Uh, four with the eight, five with the seven, six with the six. So the six and the six can both, can both go. Uh, that's gonna take away the one and the seven there. So then. Where we are going to get our information, where we are going to get our last piece of uh, critical knowledge for this puzzle, the thing that really truly breaks it open, is going to be this square, actually. This square that we really don't have anything filled in on. Um, actually, when I did this before, I even had notes for this square. This was literally the only square that I did not have notes on because it can be basically everything except for, whoops, uh, no two. It can be everything except for two, five, uh, two, six, and eight. So it's um, it's kind of a rough one. But this uh, this row is actually where we're going to get our answer from. So I'm going to go back over into note taking mode, and we're gonna we're gonna write down all of the things that can go in these squares. Now we can already take out these squares. So these both add up to 12, right? So 28 minus 12 is 16. So we know that this square, this square, this square, and this square, these four squares will all add up to 16. And so we're gonna be writing down 16 by four squares. What are all the possible combinations that can be? And of those combinations, we will eventually be subtracting out the ones that cannot 
uh, work with either a 4.8 or a 5.7. Uh, and that is actually going to be what gets us our answer. So, um, let's start just writing stuff down. So we have a one, two, three. Um, actually, it can't be one, two, three. It has to be one, two, four, nine. We can have a one, two, five, eight. And we can have a one, two, six, seven. Then there is a one, three, four, eight. A one, three, five, seven. And a one, four, five, six. And then I think that's it for the ones. I believe that is it for the ones. Uh, so from there we have a two, three, four, which is nine. So two, three, four, seven and a two, three, five, six. Um, is this all correct? Yes. All right. So, I may have even looked at this the first time I did this puzzle. I'm not gonna say I didn't, but if I did, I probably took one look at this and thought there is no way that I'm ever going to get any information out of that. But you will. So let's start crossing things off. Um, I'm sorry that this is taking up the entirety of the screen where like the clues that we're supposed to be looking at for these answers kind of are. Uh, but we'll start crossing stuff off. Hopefully that'll be in that area. Um, so for starters, we know that, uh, also, yeah, let's write down, we have a five, seven, or we have a four, eight. We have to have one of those pairs. Uh, that means that we cannot have a five and eight. We cannot have a four and a five. We cannot have a four and a seven. We cannot have a seven and an eight. Now we're definitely not gonna have a seven and an eight anyway, because it adds up to 16 over here. But anything that has four, five, anything that has four, seven, anything that has five, eight, we can go ahead and cross off. So this has five, eight. So let's get rid of that one. Uh, let's see. This one has four, seven. We can get rid of that. This one has four, five. We can get rid of that. And let's see. Is that it? Is that it? One, two, four, nine. One, two, six, seven. Three, four, eight. Yep, one, three, five, seven. And one, three, five, or two, three, five, six. Okay. All right, so that is all of that. Um, I feel like there's one more that should be, should be gone, but yeah, so here we are. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit and uh, kind of just write all these on the bottom. So one, three, five, seven, one, three, four, eight. One, two, six, seven. Apologies that this is a little bit slow but I just would like for this to be nice and clear and easy to understand. So one, two, four, nine. Okay. Okay. So, oh, you know what the other one was? There are only supposed to be four. We know there has to be a three and a four because of this box right here. So we can actually get rid of this one, two, six, seven. That's what it was. So one, two, four, nine can come down to here. One, two, four, nine. All right, so now we have this, uh, which still doesn't seem like it's gonna get us the answer. It seems like this is the point where we're going to actually hit uh, another brick wall. 
However, we can get the answer from this. If I can remember how to do it. Uh, so, for starters, we're going to write down that these top two take five and seven. The bottom two take four and eight. And uh, I wish I would have left the, the white box on, on this square, because this is actually where we're going to wind up getting this answer, is looking at that square, um, as I had said earlier. Um, so looking at that square and what that square can actually be, um, we have some possibilities here, some, some notes, um, and uh, I'm actually going to, I'm gonna do this, because don't let the notes cloud your judgment on what it can act like on what we're actually looking at here so we're trying to look at what this can be now if this is one of these top three it has to be a one that's the only thing that can go there if it's one of them if it is not that one then we have the two three five six over here so looking at the two, three, five, six, uh, that means that we have to have this four and this eight. That means that we have to have uh, this being a three. It means that we have to have this being a five. And uh, then we cannot have the six there. So this has to be a two. This has to be a, or, or no, sorry, that's backwards. Uh, this has to be our six. This has to be our two. Uh, but we can't have our two and we can't have a six uh, because of that and because of, of this six that I've drawn over. Uh, so that one is actually not going to work. Uh, so we can cross this out, which means. Uh, that this actually has to be a one. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did that a different way before. I'm almost fairly certain that I did that a different way before. Um, something else that we can do uh, as my screen shifts down a little bit in order to clear up that too, uh, and, <laughs> and uncover part of the box that I drew over. Thanks app. Uh, something that we can do is we can eliminate this middle block because this one, uh, we can't have an eight in this uh, in this in this row because we, we know we can't have an eight in this column because of that. Uh, and there is no eight here, there's no eight here, there's no eight there. Uh, so we can't have an eight anywhere up here. So we can actually get rid of this one. Oh, I'm actually, um, I'm drawing under where my thumb is too. That's so weird. Uh, so we can actually get rid of that one. Uh, and that leaves us with only a few uh, candidates left. Um, Looking at this a little bit further, uh, we have to have either a seven or a nine, which means that we can get rid of, oh, I'm drawing below where my, f okay, we're back to normal. Uh, I'm sorry, this app is just a little bit buggy. It used to be really good some years ago, um, but now at this point it just does what it wants to, and it also plays ads. Uh, okay. Anyway, we can tell that there has to be a seven or a nine in this square because of, of the information that we have. Uh, additionally, um, we can actually get rid of this one at this point, because if we know that this has, to, if we know that even like, even before, before we did anything that was even close to guessing and checking, which is a little bit disgusting, but let's see. So we eliminated this one because we know that there's no eight in the, in the row. Looking at this, uh, we can eliminate the one, three, five, seven because uh, there cannot be a five in this box. Oops. There cannot be a five in that box. So we can eliminate the one, three, five, seven right there. Uh, so from here, we are left with these two squares, 
Um, and from this point, I would definitely say that uh, just trying to think about what this square could possibly be, um, you're not really going to be so much guessing and checking so much as just uh, looking at the list of possibilities, which is, I guess, just kind of uh, checking. So it's checking without the guessing, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, looking at what this can be, it cannot be a two, it cannot be a six. So we know it can't be those two. We know that the three has to go there, so it cannot be the three. Uh, so it can only else be a five. Uh, but then if that's the case, uh, we would not be able to have a uh, two or six right here, which would mean that that would not work. Uh, so I guess that's another way of going about that. Uh, but yeah, so we can get rid of that and we can get rid of that. And that is going to leave us with this as our answer. And this is going to be the crucial bit that is actually going to fill in the entirety of this puzzle. So that's what we're left with right there. We'll go back to the puzzle and fill that in. So nine, two, and nine. Uh, we said this was a one. I do not remember what the other ones were because I have the memory of a squirrel. Uh, but it should be something like that. And then a 5-7. And the 7 going for the 13 will leave us with a 6. And that will leave us with a 2 for the 5 with the 7 and the 6 with the 8. Uh, this 2 with 8 is going to again leave us with a 6, which will go with the 9 with 3. Uh, going down, we have uh, no three. We are we already have a three in this column, which will leave us with a five for the 11, uh, which will go six and eight for that intersection with that 14. Um, we can actually piece in the fact that this is a one. We don't actually have to do that yet, uh, but we can. Uh, one, three, and five are already present in this column. That'll only leave us with a four. So pairing uh, with or going into the seven, that'll be a three. And then, of course, the other seven will leave us with a four there. Uh, and then the last number in this uh, column that is missing is a seven. Uh, one, one with the eight leaves with us with the seven. We can actually cross that seven out there. That's going to be somewhat important later. Uh, coming up here, we have a uh, eight to go with the four for the twelve. Uh, that is going to make this one a seven uh, for a four and a one. Uh, this one uh, was tied to this, uh, or, sorry, this this square was tied with this square because they were a hidden double. Uh, so that'll leave this one with a two, which will make it an eight and nine and a four going around. Uh, let's see, I guess we'll go up. We will go up. Uh, so we can already take out that. Um, so we have a 15, which leaves us with an eight. Uh, so the only combination of these two squares that can equal eight is a six and a two. And then uh, the six will be a four and a nine to complete the 13. Coming down to the bottom of the puzzle, we can knock out the six and the nine that we had uh, gotten from higher in the column. Uh, we can also knock out the four. Uh, that only leaves us with a five and an eight, which is a three and a six to go with uh, to go into eleven, and the three and six and an eight leave us with a two and a five. Uh, down here, we can get rid of the four, the six, and the, nine, and the nine again. We can get rid of the six and the nine here, which leaves us with the only place that a seven can go in this column. Seven into fifteen uh, will leave us with eight, and eight into eleven will leave us with three. Uh, from here, we are pretty much done with the puzzle. I'm actually going to do this just so I don't accidentally um, complete the puzzle. Uh, but for the sake of just having the answers laid out. Okay. Uh, from here, we can uh, look at these two squares. Again, low with high, high with low. We notice that the two fives cannot go together. So that's got to be an eight, two. Um, we could also have added everything together up here and we would have gotten 10 for these squares, which would have been the five and the five or the eight and the two. We could have found it that way. Uh, and that will only leave us with a nine to go in that square, which pairs with a three for the 12, 
a four for the seven, and that four uh, goes into uh, nine and leaves us with a five. So that is going to complete this puzzle. I am not actually going to complete this. I do like to hang on to my first set of times uh, so that I can come back later and just see how I've improved over time. Um, and even going super slow like this, um, I'm not sure exactly how long this took, uh, but I'd imagine it was about 30 minutes. It depends on how long I rambled uh, when the clock wasn't running. Uh, there. But hopefully that goes to show like a nice logical way of solving these puzzles, you know, without having to get to the realm of like guessing and checking or sitting there feeling like you're stumped. A lot of times just kind of changing your perspective, looking around at different things. Um, and uh, I mean, even as, as silly as it is, you know, just if, if I could draw, just go and draw on your puzzle, you know, highlight a, highlight over some, some spots and look at like, you know, OK, I want to compare like maybe those against uh, against this. And you can take uh, you can take this this square with this four and you can compare that one against like these three. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of little areas um, I showed earlier. Um, taking like, uh, let's, let's do a, a mass erase, uh, comparing like these two against, uh, against these two. You can, you can definitely do something like that. There's a lot of like little ways of just kind of breaking the puzzle apart. Um, but also there's, and this is one of my favorite things about these puzzles is there's a lot of different perspectives to take when you when you solve them you don't just want to do one thing you don't just want to go around uh mathing things up you don't want to just go around uh you know comparing boxes and and columns and rows and whatever you don't you don't just want to do one thing you know sometimes you want to you know list out uh what all can go into a 16 over four sometimes you want to look at um I mean, of course, you're always going to want to look at your, like your two by twos, but like sometimes you want to look at things like that, you know, like your, your lows and your highs. Um, there's all sorts of different uh, different ways to look at the puzzle. And just, you know, I, I, I guess if, if you think about the old like, I guess, business like HR, like things that they have people do, like the different hats for people to wear to look at a certain problem and with different perspectives on. Uh, it's very much the same with Kikuro. It, it works very well for it, and it probably works that way for, for all puzzles. Sometimes you need to just step back and, and take a fresh look at it. And uh, in doing that, it changes your perspective. Um, that's exactly what you're doing when you do that. So, yeah, just different different ways to go about, about doing these puzzles, and, and, and it's all just such a lovely thing. But, uh... Anyway, that is going to wrap it up here. I think I have rambled on for long enough. This video is far too long for, for what it is. Uh, but if you've watched this far, I hope that uh, this has been interesting to you and hopefully you've learned something or refreshed your memory on something. And uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great day.